Hello, welcome back. Uh, we were going to go live uh, with the second day, but the amount of internet bandwidth using right now is kind of screwing up the videos. So for now, I'm just going to record them, put them on YouTube for you. And until they can figure out how to not be glitchy, I'm just going to make these pre-done videos for you. That time that we meet in the Google Meets will be kind of like for asking questions, uh, clarifying anything that you guys have to ask me, and then also like doing warm-ups and making sure you understood the previous day's lesson. Anyway, here we go. Chapter one, section two, functions and graphs. Definition of a function is a rule that assigns each element uh, in one set a unique one and only one element in another set. Inputs are basically the x's, what you put in. Outputs are the y's. Okay, and a long time ago in maybe algebra class, they were talking about is this a function and they had a bunch of weird little deals. Okay, I don't like these. Uh, this is the easiest way for me to do it. I just graph them. I just graph. And let's see, one, five. So over one, up one, two, three, four, five. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, two, negative two. So over two, down two, right there. And three, or no, two and four. So over two and up four. Okay, so one, five, two, negative two, two and four. And the question is, is it a function? Vertical line test. Only hits one point, all good. Vertical line test, mm, hit two points, no. So basically, whenever I'm wondering if it's a function or not, I just do the vertical line test always. This one right here, graph it, one, five, uh, two, four, and three, four. Vertical line test, passes. Passes, passes. Is this a function? Yes, it is. That's it. All right. Um, what does f of x mean? G of x, h of x. What do these all mean? Y equals, y equals, y equals. Okay, they can write it a whole bunch of different ways, but basically they're just saying, what is y equal? All right. Next one. I'm sure you'll remember this. Is it a function? Okay, again, vertical line test. Is it a function? Hit one point. Hit one point. Hit one point. Hit one point, yes, it's a function. If it only hits one, it's a function. If it hits multiple points, no, it's not a function. Even if it only hits one point right there, seems like it's a function, but then if you go to another part of the graph, it hits two. All right, the next thing, write, write the formula for the area of a circle as a function of its radius. Now, write the formula for the area of the circle as a function of its radius. A lot of you guys are thinking probably, hmm, something to do with area equals pi r squared. Now this is not the answer, but it's, it's, it's gonna help. So it says the formula of the area of the circle, that's that right there, it says, of a circle as a function of its radius, function. So let's go f of, let's go f of x, f of x. f of x is equal to, so it's something to do with pi r squared. Pi as a function of its radius is x squared. So the fun, to write the formula for the area of a circle, as a function of its radius, this would actually be another way to write it. F of r is equal to pi r squared. Just something to know. 
Um, some of this stuff's going to be new. Some of it's going to be old. Some of it's going to be tough. Some of it's going to be easy. You're going to get better. Just got to see this stuff over and over and over, and you're going to get better and better. We got a whole year. We got plenty of time to fix any holes or gaps in stuff that you missed in other classes. Okay, the next thing is called interval notation, and I do not, I believe you have never learned this. This would probably be new to most of you. Interval notation. Um, it's this. So this symbol, which we call the bracket, means it's included. The round or the parenthesis means it's not included. So if we're going from two to five, Okay, so we're going from two to five. Let's just say as a number line, the way you drew this in previous classes would be with open circles like this. Okay, well, we're not doing that in calc. We're doing, it's called interval notation. It's in your book. It'll be on the AP test. You just got to get used to it. It's just a new way of writing it. From two to five would be from two to five. Always put the smaller number on the left and the bigger number on the right. Two is not part of it. It's everything between two and five. So like three is fine or 2.2 and 3.5 or all of these are fine, but not two and not five. So parentheses, not included. All right. Now, two comma five seems like that's uh, two comma five, like over two of five. Yeah, it means that also. But when they're talking about interval notation, they're talking about the axes going from left to right on this one right here. Okay, two to five. Now this one, this thing includes the two, but not the five. So we go two to five, but because this symbol has uh, less that are greater than or equal to, we include it, we put a bracket, because two is included, but five is not. All right. Okay, next one. Gets a little weird. Okay, we're going X is greater than 10. Okay, so something to do with 10. Now, X is bigger than 10, bigger than 10. So... My other thing, so this is the small number, 10 is the small number, and then everything else is over here. So 10 is included, and we're going forever this direction. And forever this direction is infinity, all right? Now, on infinity, since infinity is not actually a number, we put round. Because it's not included, it's not even a number. Okay, so uh, x is greater than or equal to 10. So we're going from 10 to infinity. Okay, um, x is less than or equal to 12. Now, 12 would be the big one, and x is less than. So it would go something like 12. And we're going to do round or parentheses because it's not included. And it says X is less than or equal to 12. So we're talking about the stuff that's on this side of 12 and the stuff that's this side of 12. If this is positive infinity, this would be negative infinity. And remember, smaller number, bigger number. And whenever you put infinity, it's always round. Last one, all real numbers. That means from all the way over there, to all the way over here, from the smallest possible number to the biggest possible number. And the smallest possible number is negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, we're just teaching you how to do interval notation. You don't have to do interval notation. You just need to understand it, because if that's a question, you can write your answers like this or like this, but you do need to spot this. When they put it in the book, you need to know what it means. All right, moving on. All right, uh, 
Grab your calculator, your graphing calculator. You're gonna need a graphing calculator for this class. A TI-83 or a TI-84 are just fine. TI-89s are fine also, but the one that we mainly use is the TI-84 in the 83, they're the same thing. And graph this, y equals one over x. Graph it in your graphing calculator, press pause, and then come back. Okay, if you graphed it, it should have looked like something like that. Okay, and the question says state the domain and the range and graph it. So I graphed it right there. Okay, the domain. So write D, and the domain is in interval notation from all the way over there, which is this way right here, from negative infinity. Two, what happens is it comes all the way to zero and doesn't really touch. That's an asymptote right there. Can't touch this. Uh, so it goes to zero, but isn't really going to hit zero. So we put parentheses. And then this symbol is new, and it's union. It's a U. Union. Which also means pretty much and. It means and. So we're going from negative infinity to zero, negative infinity to zero, jumping over zero, because zero, it, 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 uh, the domain or the x's can't include zero. And then we're going from zero, but not actually zero, to forever this way, which is infinity. So the domain is from negative infinity to zero, and, or union, zero to infinity. All right, range. Uh, domain is left and right. Range is up and down. Okay, so the range, we're going from negative infinity again to this point, which is zero, roundy or parentheses, union, and then we go from zero to infinity. It's pretty much the same thing, domain and range. All right, the next one, type this in your graphing calculator. Press pause and do it and put it on your paper and then see what you get. Do the domain and range. Okay, the graph of this looks something like this. Okay, domain, range. We're going from zero, and if you look at your table on your calculator, it actually, zero is part of it, because the square root of zero is zero. That is a real number. So we go from zero, bracket, because zero is included, to infinity, roundy. Always the smaller number on the left, bigger number on the right. The range, okay, that means low to high. Um, domain left and right, range, low to high. The smallest number, is zero and ultimately eventually this will go to infinity so there you go type this last one in your calculator and on your own try to get it actually i said the last one it's not the last one there's another one after this all right, this one should look like this is a half a circle. Uh, it is a half a circle. When you guys do graphs, you should put tick marks so they actually know where these are on special points. You don't have to do any of these other ones, but you should kind of have this one. Your graph should be all ticked off to the left, to the right. Anyway, um, b -b 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 domain. Okay, farthest left, negative two. Bracket, because it is included two, positive two. Range, lowest point is zero and included zero. The highest point, two, included. Domain range. Click this one in your calculator. Um, in your y equals, type 
x to the 2 divided by 3. 2 thirds, right there. And when you press pause, type in your calculator, see if the graph looks. This is actually a calculus graph. We're going to use this one a lot. All right, you should have gotten a graph that looks like this. We'll talk more about this graph later, but it's called a cusp. Okay, this is a cusp. That's all you need to know for now. Uh, you don't even need to know that it's a cusp for now. We'll talk about that later. They just want the domain and the range of this cusp. The domain, we're going from negative infinity to this point right here. Now, if you check on your table on your graphing calculator, at zero, it should say zero. Zero is included. Goes to positive infinity, basically all real numbers. Okay, range goes from zero, includes zero, to infinity. That's it. Okay, that's part one. I'll give you part two in a second.